Well, welcome back to another exciting episode of Speakeasy with Eli and Zara. This week, we're chatting to Stephen Ryan from the Geelong Pride Film Festival. The festival firstly kicked off in 2017 and with a successful online event last year in 2020, they've come back this year bigger and better than ever with both online and in cinema screens. Welcome Stephen. Thanks so much for having me, I really appreciate it. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and say how the festival was established? We established the festival back in, in 2017. I've always really loved um, film and cinema and LGBTIQ plus cinema. Um, and I was, and I suppose I've been living in Geelong for about um, 17 years and I always thought, oh, it's such a shame we don't have um, a film festival here um, of, our, of our own. And for, for several years I used to complain about that and I, I decided, oh, well, actually, let's just, what would it take to, to start off? Let's have some film screenings. And it kind of grew from there and we gathered a group of volunteers and, and had our first film screening and we soon found out that everything that's involved in just one film screening is is kind of what you need for a festival but you just have to expand it on a larger scale and, it's a, and a lot is involved and we it was a really steep learning curve but we went from there and then had our, our first full festival in, in 2018 and I suppose we've been growing since then. And um, so now we, we've got a, a group of volunteers. It's, it's entirely a volunteer run festival. And we, we, we screen short films and, and feature films from all around the world. And we work with a number of supporters and partners to, um, to stage the festival who've been really generous in their support. Uh, Deakin University, WorkSafe Victoria, Geelong Council, Victorian Government, Thorn Harbour, of course, are really great supporters um, of, 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 of a lot of um, uh, events across regional Victoria, um, as well as local media producers, um, uh, provincial media. We've had great support from um, MQFF in Melbourne as we're, as we're established. Um, and then even this year, we're actually growing the festival with the support of MQFF. We're able to actually show an additional uh, five feature films this year. We're partnering with them on the, the travelling showcase. So, oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> This year we're we're going to be bigger than ever. So we're nice. yeah, you know we, we've learned some new skills in 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 going online, and so now we're both online and and in cinemas. And I suppose that's how we we got to where we are uh, today. Not only are you providing something for the community, you're really building community at the same time. That's really what I love about um, the festival, and I think what a lot of people love about coming along to the screenings is that we've got a place that's that's ours. We've got great supporters at the Pivotonian Cinema in Geelong. We take over the whole cinema when we have our screenings. It's a really relaxed vibe. You chat about the films, you meet new people and actually sort of starting to yeah, build that community that, you know, we, we also have screenings throughout the year. So you, you see those same familiar faces mm. um, from screening to screening and you, yeah, I, I feel like we've started to establish um, uh, a community here. Yeah, absolutely. Community is, is such an amazing thing to come from all these projects that we that we work on to deliver an idea or a, an interest, but it brings so many people together with that common interest. And I just love how yeah. that works. We grow each year in terms of the, the, the content we put on. So we're really pleased this year to, to have six um, curated um, packages of short films. These are short film packages you won't see anywhere else. We've got our signature shorts package, Happy Endings. <laughs> and so that, <laughs> there tends to be a lot of trauma in LGBT films mm. often and, and a lot of short films as, as well. And, and we got um, some feedback that we really want to see positive, uplifting mm. films. So we, we started to search around for really good quality um, films that are uplifting ones that are humorous, um, ones that um, really um, about celebrating being um, part of the community mm -hmm. and celebrating identity. Now we've got another package of brand new films this year um, uh, of, of films that are all uplifting and positive and have, happy, have happy endings of all, all different types of happy <laughs> oh, endings. That sounds great. I really love that. It must be quite um, an experience going through all the different films. What, what's the submission process and what kind of screening process do you have? Technology has really grown, I suppose, in about the last five years for film festivals. And you have a range of online platforms where filmmakers from around the world can submit 
to your festival. We've reviewed over a thousand short films mm. um, for this year's festival. We're showing 54 and wow. um, we're able to um, set out a range of, of, of categories. We're very specific that we're looking for LGBTIQ plus films. We've got a process of a judging panel and selection committee that, that review the, the films and we're always looking to have lots of um, representation. Mm. Um, whole we we want to um, see great trans film um, this year. We've also looked to really increase our re- representation of bisexuality in films. Oh, There's a lot of bisexuality depicted in in films, but often it's not actually acknowledged and discussed as this is what it means to be bisexual. Mm. Um, we've also got some great intersex films. We were really going to look at just having four packages of films, but we've got six. We've got <laughs> the Happy Endings package. We've got documentary shorts um, from around the world, including uh, an award-winning film from a student filmmaker in, in WA, Taylor Burton, and uh, a story of a, of a young trans man coming out um, at high school. We've got our, our package of rainbow shorts, uh, we've got a package of, uh, it's called From Now On, and each of each of the men in these films, take their lives take a turn and a new direction. It's called From Now On, and, and after their um, encounters with other men, their lives are changed in one way or the other. Another package of shorts called um, uh, Knowing Me, Knowing Her, and that's uh, a, a package of films around women who really know what they want and sometimes what they don't want, and that can lead to sparks and passion or it can lead to tension and 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 interesting situations as well representation is just evolving the way we define ourselves and our identities and how we refer to that i think just really comes through in our youth package pansexual and trans and non-binary and gender diverse and a whole range of identities and expressions that are depicted and celebrated as, as part of these these youth short films. With our audience who aren't part of the LGBTI community, can you give us a brief, um, from your perspective or any feedback you've got of why representation and seeing ourselves on screen is so important? When you are coming to terms with yourself and how you view yourself, you're doing that privately. You're doing that on the inside. And sometimes the only the only way that you have to think about that is to to see other things and other representations on the screen. I remember myself as a young person growing up, you know, hiding away in a different room and watching some of these television programs that had um, some gay representation on them and just, you know, seeing hope and seeing um, seeing myself and when John Fielding kissed Michael Tolliver on, on one of the episodes of the first season of, of Tales of the City, I think... You know, I, I lit up and realised that I started to accept myself for the first time. So I think the more and more we, we have that, the better it is to, to watch those online as, as part of people's process of coming out. But then to be able to experience it as a community together in the cinema is, is even better. So, yeah, I'm really passionate about mm. representation. It absolutely matters. Yeah, and one of the things that I've noticed when um, you come out of a film festival like that, when there's been such great representation and you have some people who um, aren't LGBTI identifying, they'll be talking with each other and with their friends and family that they've gone with um, to say, wow, I, I never really understood that and I never saw this um, from this perspective. So it's, it's really helpful to raise that awareness for the broader community as well. We set up a festival in in mind to share these stories, not only amongst our community, but with the wider community too. So we do encourage everyone to come along to our to our films. I know it, it does open people's minds. I know, I know speaking to my parents that have come along to to some of the screenings, having discussions after the, afterwards saying, oh, I never quite realised it, thought about the things from this this perspective as, as well, so yeah. The program this year is really massive. You've got over 50 short films, nine feature length movies, um, both contemporary and classic LGBTI films. Can you give us a taste of what we can expect? We've got the fabulous documentary Ahead of the Curve about the establishment of the world's first um, lesbian lifestyle magazine, Curve magazine, and its founder, Franco Stevens. The Georgian and uh, Georgian Swedish co-production And Then We Danced, um, set in the sort of the hyper masculine world of Georgian traditional dance. We've got Breaking Fast, which is a film about um, a Muslim man living in West Hollywood and 
um, he strikes up a relationship uh, with another guy who who is a Muslim but wants to learn more about the process of of Ramadan and, and fasting, and so he joins him for breaking the fast every every evening, and so that's that's a romantic comedy. Other feature films include uh, Summerland, um, starring Gemma Arterton. That's a British film set in World War II about. Um, a woman who takes in an evacuated child during the war. Uh, the Man with the Answers. Now, this is a film, um, it's it's like we've all been locked down and haven't been able to travel overseas. Mm-hmm. This one is a great a chance to sort of see some amazing picturesque scenery throughout Europe. It's a road trip about a guy who's going from Greece where he lives through to uh, to Germany and he picks up a hitchhiker on the way and they have a... Um, I suppose a, a journey and an, and an exploration of, of themselves and and who they are. We've got the the amazing, uh, very powerful um, trans film uh, Rurangi, which is a New Zealand feature film. It's written and, and produced by members of New Zealand's uh, queer and Maori and gender diverse communities. It's about um, a a gay transgender activist, Kaz, who returns to his isolated regional town and. Uh, a lot of people haven't seen him since he's transitioned, um, including his his previous boyfriend. And it's about exploring all of those relationships with his family and with his um, with his friends. We've got the Greenhouse, which is an Australian film. Steelers, which is a documentary about one of the world's uh, first gay rugby teams. It certainly sounds like a great lineup. What would you say to somebody who um, hasn't been to a film festival before and um, maybe is, is considering coming along? That's the great thing about the cinema. It's a social occasion that you can engage with as much or as little as uh, you want to. You can come along to the cinema, not talk to anyone, go in, watch the film, have a great time um, and really see some amazing stories. Or you can meet some people and uh, make some new friends um, a, as well. With the majority of our content also provided online, you can you can try it out online. We're partnering with the Victorian government um, through um, the Pride Festivals and Events Fund to provide captions for every single um, film that we're screening online. Yes, I would say um, try it out and um, and come along and meet some great people. I think that you've given everyone a really good reason. There's so much across <laughs> the board why we should come. Would you like to give our viewers um, where where do they go to buy tickets? Where are you online? How they can find you? Yeah, you can go to gpff.ferv.tickets. That's gpff.ferv. That's f-e-r-v-e dot tickets and that's where you can you can buy the tickets it's also where you can stream the films you can buy access there and then um, on your account you can watch the films either on your phone your ipad um, your laptop or you could stream for your from your device to your um your tv also for all of your viewers um you can have a, a discount code for uh two of our shorts uh, packages um, that's the happy endings package our signature package and the documentary shorts if you use the code happy um, when you're when you're adding your when you go to add something to your cart for the in cinema screening will be half price eight dollars. So thank you so much. That's that's great. amazing. Very generous. Yeah. And so you've got no excuse <laughs> if you're watching and you're considering coming along to a film festival. And if you haven't uh, been to a Pride film festival before and you're feeling a little bit anxious about being in that space, you can try it from home. So. Thank you so much, Stephen, for sharing that with us and also for your discount code. So thank you for watching Speak Easy for LGBTI. Tune in next week for more community content, interviews and our fabulous faces. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for extended episodes and like our Facebook page to show your love for Speak Easy and the LGBTI community. Thank you so much.